Hey guys, welcome to the Challenge Podcast. I'm Coach Steve. And I'm Coach Nick. And we're going to be talking about everything fitness, health, and the challenge. Let's get on with the show. What's up guys, Coach Steve here, and welcome back to another episode of the Coach's Corner. In today's episode, I'm joined with our co-host, Coach Nick. Nick, how are we doing today? I'm really well, thank you, Coach Steve, and yourself? I'm well, I'm well. I am currently sipping on some Max's Beta Pump because once I finish this recording, I'm gonna go slip outside and go and train. I've got some squats on the plate. So if over the next uh, 20 minutes or so, I start to become more animated in my speech, uh, you know why? Because I'm getting pumped up. That's right. That's right. I, I don't really know how you could be more animated. So we'll, <laughs> if anyone can spot it, then um, let's see. It'll be more in the next 10 minutes when I'm talking, you'll be like, ah, ah, you want to say something? <laughs> No, it's going to be good. So welcome to Coach's Corner where we offer our tip for the week. Uh, mm. Nick's going to start us off. She's in the red corner. Uh, Nick, it's on you. What advice do you have us for today? Thank you very much. So today I'm just going to tell you five w- reasons why women should weight train. Now, this can also apply to men. Please don't think that I'm I'm segregating the, the community or anything like that. It can apply to anyone, any body of any gender or identity why people should weight train but um i'm just specifically talking about women because i do think though in the last maybe 12 years or so the stigma has moved away from don't weight train because you'll get bulky but just in case anyone's left behind and and still going wait a minute i don't want to i just want to stick to my um elliptical machine but i do want you know i want curves and i want glutes and i want what i see but i don't know um that's what i just i just want to give you five quick reasons why women should weight train so the first one is pretty obvious it increases your muscle mass so um that can actually improve overall strength and athletic performance as well as slightly increased metabolism which means ultimately you can actually get away with eating more and looking leaner so that's pretty cool. Um, we've always been told to eat less and be less. So I love this for us that um, it's about being more, becoming more. Um, and the fact is you won't be able to put on that muscle without increasing that strength and your performance, which is like a two-pronged thing because it also makes you feel like an absolute badass. So I love that for us. Second one is like a health reason, and that is that it supports your bone health. So um, as women get older, in particular, it's um, just important to reduce that risk of osteoporosis. So um, it's a really good way to ensure that you are covered in that way that you we do, you know, we do DEXA scans these days for for fat, for body fat composition um, reasons. But if you actually look at a DEXA scan, your bone health as well, it's interesting to have a look at and how you can improve that with weight training. Um, So this is another one. It improves your body composition. So you might think, oh, this is where the scales come into it. Maybe ultimately you won't necessarily, you might have a big weight loss when you, when you lose fat, then you might gain some weight. And suddenly the scale isn't as important as a reference point sometimes you want to see it go up people don't ask you what you weigh generally if they're if they're nice people they don't go what's your body weight they say wow you're looking amazing and muscle is what's going to help you get there not starving yourself and being skinny but actually creating and developing a physique like like an artist like a like a da vinci like a michelangelo you know that kind of a thing so it improves your body composition um, it can, yeah, ultimately reduce your body fat, increase your muscle mass. That's what you want to look at. You actually, you know, you want to go, how much lean, lean body mass are you carrying? You know, instead of going, what do you weigh? That kind of thing. That's really cool. It's a good conversation, good dialogue to have. Um, in our current Facebook groups, we do have a muscle gaining one. So we might elaborate a bit more in that here and there. Um, there are some women that are really on that great journey. Just recently, um, Carmen Woodenberg and I did a great po- Um, podcast about that so that'll be released shortly as well just plugging that as we go Um, it I can't even explain this one this is just from the heart but it boosts confidence and self-esteem I'm not even kidding you Um, you can be having the worst day people can say stuff to you Um, people feel free to say anything to me I mean sure it happens to everyone but I could be in the supermarket someone might say your butt's in the way or something (laughs) 
which I think is a compliment, but you know, you might have someone say something and then you go into the gym, you focus on your numbers and you leave feeling amazing. You know, you might go, I just want to get 12 pull-ups today and you get them and there's no arguing with that. You've done it yourself. It is the best way to increase your self-esteem. You you get around like-minded people. Even if you're at home, you might be feeling like crap. You go out to the shed and you feel awesome. That's going to be you, Coach Steve, really soon. Um, so performance-based goals lead to such confidence in all areas that I can't even explain. Like I'm such a little mousy little introvert, but yet when I train, I end up to be just this this beaming, huge, larger than life presence that can do podcasts and everything. So, you know, I say weight training for all the win for that. Um, I might be exaggerating slightly, but, you know, this is my time. <laughs> the next one um, is that you can ultimately support your weight management. So it, it kind of, it redefines everything. So it's not the same as say, if you go on a crash diet, you lose all your muscle mass, you lose some body fat as well, but then you end up putting that back on. I think once you focus on weight training, it opens up a whole new door about body composition. You might eat, but you don't think of regaining that weight because a lot of it, if you're training well, will be muscle as well. So it empowers you quite a bit to take control of your entire life. I don't mean to put it up on a pedestal like that, but it actually deserves a pedestal. Weight training would be the one thing that I would not want anyone to take away from me. And to prove it, when we were in that lockdown, that was the first thing I did. I didn't even check if my job was secure or anything. I just went out and bought like a power rack and got it delivered before we were locked down because I knew that weight training would ground me to do everything else in my life. So preach. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Nick, I just want to compliment what you said with a story, mm -hmm. the story um, from one of my first ever clients when I was a first PT, I would have been maybe 18, 19 at the time. And her name was Donna. I don't want to forget Donna and Donna really cool. She was in her mid forties, so older than me. Um, and she had, you know, had, had a few kids, uh, had a, had a job that she, you know, okay with um and you know once i started taking her through some weightlifting um i remember that she was always really scared of lifting weights okay primarily because she thought she was going to hurt herself okay and didn't quite understand the positive effects of it um i had her in a leg press um and week on week i would see her in this leg press and i'd push her harder and harder and harder um and then one day out of the blue as you do as a personal trainer having a little small chat she goes oh steve i actually quit my job today I'm like, whoa, 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 like, what do you mean? Um, she's like, yeah, like, you know, I just knew that I could do it. Um, and she turns around, and she says, I always thought that I could never lift weights. I always thought I could never do the leg press. Um, but it's you, Steve, it's you that's been pushing me. And I just feel that, yeah, it's the same as with my work. I, I'm not happy with it. And I just decided to, to quit. I was like, whoa, <laughs> okay. Uh, what are you going to do instead? She's like, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet, but I just, feel like it's the, the right thing to do. Um, and th the point of the story is that, you know, Donna was a very reserved um, woman. Um, she, you know, didn't have a lot of, uh, you know, self-esteem or self-confidence. Um, and through strength training, she found that confidence to quit her job and say, no, oh, I'm, I'm done with this. I know it's going to be okay. I know I'm stronger than this. I have the confidence to quit my job and find something I'm really passionate about. So I think weight training goes beyond the physiological sense, like what happens in our body. I think it does, you know, change us in, in the mental sense, makes us stronger, have a bit of grit, have a bit of confidence to, you know, go out and get what we want. Um, and, you know, that, that sense of always pushing ourselves a little bit further makes us rethink really about life being like, okay, well, how do I improve my squat? How do I improve my life? How do I improve my job? You know, it's the same conversation, you know, reflecting and improving over time. Um, so Donna taught me that when I was very young. So thank you to Donna. Um, but I think many of us can uh, either learn that directly through like weights training or resistance training, or just something that we stumble upon and be like, hey, I've done this resistance training thing. I can do this. What else can I do? Right. Um, and that is really empowering over time. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's, I've never, ever heard anyone say weight training is disempowering. So think about it like that as well. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Nick, I want to take the uh, proverbial soapbox and talk about my coach's corner. 
which I want to discuss training around an injury. Okay, mm -hmm. Tra training around an injury, it's going to be a speed run because this is a massive complicated topic. And the first thing I'm going to say is that if you have an injury or experiencing pain or discomfort that is significant to you and your quality of life, please visit a registered healthcare professional, someone like a physio or an osteopath for an assessment um, and for more specific advice. Okay, but let's talk about broadly training around an injury. First thing we need to understand is that injury uh, is not strongly correlated to pain. They're two separate things. So we can have injury on its own, we can have pain on its own, and we can also have pain and injury together. But your level of pain uh, does not indicate the level of injury or tissue damage because pain is a sensation about actual or um, thought to be tissue injury, okay? An example of this is something like a bruise, okay? A bruise um, is bleeding under the skin. It's bleeding in the body. It's actual tissue damage in the body. And how often do you find bruises on your body that you don't even know how you got? I find them all the time. You know, I, I, I get them from training. I get them from trying to pick up my kid. I get them from like knocking myself against the wall. I get bruises all the time. I don't even know that they're there and they're not even painful and you can poke them. They're not painful. So this is an example of actual tissue damage that elicits no pain. Okay. Whereas on the flip side, how often have you had something like a paper cut or a little scratch? Maybe, you know, your, your cat scratched you or something like that. A little tiny scratch on your skin and it stings, it's painful, it throbs, but it's the tiniest little insignificant thing in your life, but it's the most painful thing going around. And the more you look at it, the more painful it becomes. So once it becomes a center of your attention, it becomes painful. Um, and this is such a small, small thing. So the level of pain that you experience can scale depending on your expectations, your environment, you know, your attention, your focus. Um, and it's not correlated with the actual intent of the injury. Okay, so this is important because if you have an injury of some sort, let it be really small or really large, um, and you're experiencing some pain with it, that level of pain doesn't always correlate to the actual level of injury. So when it comes around to training, Okay, talking about training around an injury, because one of the best ways to manage our injury, to promote recovery, to promote rehabilitation from that injury is to add load to that tissue, right? Um, we don't want to decondition a tissue that is injured. We want it to get stronger. We want it to heal. So we need to apply load to that tissue in a safe manner over time so that we can return to our previous quality of life. So when we do go to train, if we are experiencing any pain while training, we need to be comfortable with a little bit of discomfort. We need to be comfortable with a little bit of pain and in a loose way, really um, acknowledge and take on board that idea of, you know, no pain, no gain. And as, as, as bad as that sounds, you know, we, too much pain is, is too much. We don't want to be training a really high level of pain, but we need to expect some level of discomfort. Often when we do have an ache or a pain, you know, Nick, if you hurt your shoulder or your back or your, your neck or something like that, and you go visit a massage therapist or an osteo or a chiro or someone, and they do some manual therapy on you, you expect some pain, right? You know, it's, you know, it's going to be sore when they find like the sore spot or like put a needle in you or crack you or something like that. You, you, you expect it's going to be a little bit painful. That's no different from going and training to expect some pain. Okay. Now, some exercises will uh, stimulate tissues, stimulate muscles that can result in an experience that is similar to pain. And what I'm specifically talking about is something like lower back musculature experiencing DOMS or the pump. Okay. So if we get DOMS in our quads, you know, the next day you're walking around, oh my God, my quads are so sore. We often don't look at that as a negative thing. If you have DOMS in your biceps, cause you had a really good bicep workout, you don't see that as a negative thing. But if you have DOMS in your lower back, like the muscles of your lower back, you did squats or deadlifts or something. Sometimes we experience that as a bad thing. We scratch our head. Why? Why is that such a, a bad thing? Often because of our expectations and our beliefs, thinking that our uh, back is fragile, which it's not, um, or previous history of, of, of stories of people are, oh, they did their back, this thing happened, that thing happened, okay? So we need to have this expectation that, hey, we may experience the pump in our back, we may experience DOMS in our back, and that sensation can be confused with something that is negative, okay? So that's something that we need to understand before we jump into this thing. Now, 
when it actually comes to training around an injury, firstly, we need to manage our pain. So we need to find an activity that we can complete where we experience some pain that is less than a five out of 10 on how we determine our pain. Okay, so while I'm doing an exercise, if I've got a sensitive back, a sore back, and I'm doing deadlifts, I need to choose a variation of the deadlift with a load of the deadlift to an intensity of the deadlift that elicits less than a five out of 10 of pain. So, you know, a little bit of an ache, a little bit of a cramp, a little bit of stiffness, um, maybe that's a three out of 10 or four out of 10, great, happy days. I wanna be able to do that while I'm completing the exercise and after I complete that exercise. So, you know, over the next 24 hours, after I do my training session, if I have a little bit of discomfort in my back, maybe a one, two, three, four, five out of 10, okay, no dramas, happy days. If I'm experiencing pain higher than a five out of 10, maybe a six, seven, eight, nine, 10 out of 10 pain, okay, we've done too much, too often, too, too soon. So either you're going too heavy, you're doing too many sets, too much volume, too many reps, Maybe the variation of that exercise isn't right for you. Maybe you need a bit more stability. Maybe you need shortened range of motion, something like that, so that it can work within our pain tolerance. This principle can be applied to energy, any injury, let that be, or any discomfort or any pain. So let that be hip pain, knee pain, ankle pain, shoulder injuries, neck injuries, back injuries, whatever it is, we can use our pain scale to dictate our training. Now, when it comes to actually executing our training, most of us would benefit from slightly regressing the exercise, you know, changing the type of exercise, doing less uh, load on the bar, um, or training further away from failure. So if you know that you can do 10 reps at 100 kilos on a squat, maybe do five reps, and that would be like a five reps in reserve way of describing it. We want our reps to look consistent. So if you were to film yourself, you shouldn't be able to tell the difference between rep one, two, three, four, five. They should all look exactly the same. That's the ultimate goal of training is that it's very consistent reps. Um, you want a very consistent start point, a very consistent end point. So, you know, you may start, let's say a bicep curl, your arm completely straight is the start point. And then, you know, your hand touching your shoulder is the end point. So you want that start and end point, point A and point B to be clearly defined and repeatable over time. I'd recommend that you avoid bouncing off soft tissues so let's say again a bicep curl you know you don't want to be straightening your arm and then bouncing off the soft tissues at the end range of motion have a controlled um, stop position at point a and then a controlled stop position at point b so it is consistent over time the final tip i would say is around training with an injury look at ways to increase the stability of an exercise so Stability is on a spectrum, Nick. So on, on, on one side, you have something that's really instable, maybe like a BOSU ball, really wobbly. It's not a very safe for our nervous system because it goes, whoa, 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 hold on, you can't really create force. Then on the other side of the spectrum, we have something like, let's say a, a leg press, strap yourself in, everything's stable, everything's good to go and you can create force. So we wanna be leaning towards more stable exercises, maybe utilizing some machines, utilizing things like maybe seated activities. So instead of doing a standing bicep, dumbbell bicep curl, you do a seated dumbbell bicep curl or a seated barbell, barbell a bit more stable than dumbbells. Um, because when we're, we're stable, there's less moving parts, right? You don't have to coordinate your core and your balance and your stability, it's, you're sitting down, right? So we can utilize some machines, some seated positions, some more stable positions to complete our exercises um, so that we can create more, more control power rather than instable exercises. And that could be some, some little swaps, maybe from dumbbells to barbells, maybe from um, standing to seated, maybe utilizing some machines, okay? But the ultimate takeaway here is around training with injuries. Number one, be cautious about using pain to dictate how much tissue damage is potentially there. Um, there's a very strong decorrelation between the two. Um, expect some pain while you're training, that's part of the rehab process try to choose an exercise where you are experiencing less than a five out of 10 of pain, um, and then modify that exercise that you stay within your pain tolerance. And that could be using more stable exercises, um, changing the range of motion, the type of exercise, the load that you use, the proximity to failure, try to make each rep look exactly the same and have a clear start and end position. Injury isn't the end of the world. Um, and often we, uh, use an injury as the reason why we don't exercise. Oh, I've got a sore back, I can't do that. Oh, my, my shoulder is it's just dodgy, I, I can't do that. 
where your choice to not complete physical activity is probably a maintaining factor to that injury. So if you've got a sore back and you're afraid to do deadlifts um, because of the sore back, your back is probably sore because you don't deadlift. Okay, you know, your body may be deconditioned, which is a nice way of saying weak. Your body may not be strong enough just to do life, right? Your body might not be strong enough to be able to get off the couch and walk around and get in the car and get off the toilet and all those types of things. Maybe your pain and your injury would go away if you introduce some resistance training, okay? Um, and we see that very commonly with just common injuries, sore shoulders, necks, backs, where the musculature and the um, coordination of those tissues are deconditioned, not as strong as they can be, and you'll probably benefit from getting stuck into some training. So Nick, that is my blue corner, the training around injuries tip for the week. Well, as Ernest Hemingway would say, stronger in the broken places. <sighs> I'm Ooh, sorry, but thanks. Dropping some some sweet lines from Ernest. Thank you. Thank you. No Nick. worries. No worries. I knew it would come in handy one day. <laughs> Today's the day. You've been keeping that back there somewhere. Oh, I'm going to wait really, for Hemingway to drop some since, sweet, since sweet bars. Thank you. Sweet, sweet Hemingway. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Mm. Well, we will go spend a, a midnight in Paris and uh, go read some, some Hemingway after this. Yeah. But look, Nick. I think that wraps up there for this episode of the Coach's Corner. If you mm -hmm. enjoyed this episode, let us know. Um, and we'll catch you next week for episode number, whew, number five, Nick? Number five, the Coach's Corner? Yeah, I think it's five Coach's Corner. So it's just baby. How good. How good. See you there, guys. See ya. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you like the show, share it with a friend. Or leave us a review on iTunes to spread the good word. See you next time.